Hi everybody, welcome back to the part 6 of this tutorial series. Phew, already 6 parts, this is getting long. In this part you will see me create yet another substance painter material, this time a metal base for our bowel. So let's dive right in and begin by first hiding the statue group we created previously, so that the computing of our new material is faster. Add a new fill layer and make it this dark red color. If you click on this dynamic icon here, you'll be able to change the hue. Here you can see me changing the scale to 3. It doesn't really do anything in case of a solid color. It would only change something if the color had some kind of pattern. It's just an annoying habit I have, so ignore that. Okay, now change the roughness to something like 0.24 and then metallic slider all the way to 1. Now name your layer. And we want to create a group under which we will stack all our metal layers. Just select our fill layer, hit Ctrl G and name it Bowl. Now we can create a black mask and with this polygon fill tool here, make sure that you have the weight set to 1 and then activate this mesh fill mode. Simply click on the bowl and it will mask this separate object out, so that only the bowl is now textured. Again, it will increase the performance of Substance Painter. With that, switch back to paint mode and we are ready to add some new layers. Ok, now add a new fill layer, name it Dirt. Make this one a darker color as well, but this time let's give it a bluish tone. You can deactivate height channel for this one and then set the roughness and metalness to 1. Add a black mask to the layer and then add a generator dirt. This is a new filter that we haven't used before, but basically it's just a different kind of mask editor, adjusted specifically to add generic or custom grunge patterns to your masks. Now let's start setting the values here, use dirt level at 0.7, dirt contrast to 0, grunge amount to 0.5 and play around with the grunge scale, something like 6 will do. We can also add a levels adjustment layer here to make the dirt pop a little bit more. It basically works the same way as in Photoshop. You slide the shadow, midtones and highlight points until you're happy with the contrast. I want some more contrast between the darkest and the lightest parts of my dirt. Now I'm not really happy with the way the dirt flows across my model, so we can try to turn on the triplanar blending for the UVs, which makes them wrapped around the bowel a bit better. A downside here is that the pattern repetitions is now quite apparent. It's ok on the outside, but quite visible here on the inside. So let's try to correct it by adjusting the triplanar contrast. Ok, that doesn't seem to do much, so rather let's lower the grunge scale number to something like 4 and yeah, I think that the repetitions are now much less apparent. Anyway, we will have our coals and sticks in this middle portion of the bowl, so the tiling will be hidden anyway. And with that we are ok to go to another layer. Make a new fill layer again, make it bluish dark and set the roughness to about 0.6. Leave everything else as it is and name the layer Dirt 2. We're creating this one because we want to have more variations in the patterns here. Generally the more variation, the more natural our materials look. Add a mask editor, a filter we used extensively in the previous part of this series. And because you surely watched the previous parts, you know that here we have to define a grunge texture like this rust fine. Now let's start setting up the values, add something like 0.25 to the global balance, increase our texture 1 opacity and also the ambient occlusion and most importantly curvature opacity. Now you can add any number of masks to your layers just by using Ctrl G to group them and then adding new masks to the group. You can see me doing that here and also we can see that I'm not using the mask editor this time. Instead with my mask selected, 
I added a fill layer and on this layer in the grayscale pull down I chose a texture called grunge rough cast. This is yet another way to add some grunge data to your masks. You can see the result is subtle but it's always these little details that make the difference. Now to make the mask a little more defined lower the balance to 0.3 and also increase the scale to about 4. This gives it more detail. And I think this is looking fine. Moving on. Add a new fill layer and name it Darken. Once again set it to very dark reddish color. Roughness to 0.7 and leave metalness to 0. Add a white mask to the layer and add mask editor. Here activate the global invert option which will basically invert the whole effect of this filter. I wanted to mask out the inner parts of the geometry instead of the outer ones. For the texture 1 let's use grunge rust fine. Up here let's experiment with the values of the different opacities. Try to lower the curvature opacity and increase the ambient occlusion opacity. That doesn't really do much. So instead raise the global balance which gives us a smoother result. Now group the darken layer under a new group and add a mask to it. Another way to generate a masked result using filters is to simply find one here in the smart masks menu and from there drag it onto your mask. In my case I chose this occlusion smart mask and then adjusted its settings. I increased the curvature slider to 0.8 and also I decided to go back to the darken layer settings and increase the roughness to 0.9 to make the result more dark, like there's really a layer of dirt and grease at the edges of the bowl. Cool, I like the result so far, so let's move on. Now let's add some more edge dirt, create a new fill layer, name it, set dark red color, give it a roughness of 1, add a mask and a new mask editor. Uh, you know the drill by now. Here add grunge rust fine to the texture 1 slot and dirt 1 to the second one. Keep in mind this is all just based on my previous experimentation and you can use any textures you want for this. In fact I encourage you to do so. The awesome thing about Substance Painter is how much fun it is to experiment here. Now raise global contrast to 0.6, texture 2 opacity to something like 0.75. Ambient occlusion to 1 as well as texture 1 opacity. You can set global balance to 0.6 and maybe lower the contrast to 0.5. Experiment as you like, like me. In fact I went in later and readjusted the values as you can see here with global blur to 0.2, global balance to 0.6 global contrast to 0.5, then texture opacity at 1, texture 2 at 0.7, ambient occlusion at 0.7 and curvature at 0.3. Alright, name our new fill layer edge highlight and set its color to something light this time. For example this light orange. Decrease the roughness and set the metalness to 1. Add a mask editor and once again set texture 1 to grunge rust fine. Then go in and set the values to 0.1 for global blur, 0.1 to global balance and 0.6 for global contrast. Try 0.5 for the texture 1 opacity and 1 for curvature. I want the edges of my metal, areas where the surface might be worn, to pop up and I think this looks quite okay. However, let's play with the settings some more, adjust the global balance to something like 0.05. Yeah, this might work even better. 
Also, I don't want the edges of my mask to be nearly that sharp. So let's add a filter to my mask and up here, choose blur with a value of 0.1. Good, I think we're done here. The last layer we're going to be creating today is this moss layer. Add a fill layer just like before and this time make it a greenish color with roughness of 0.75. Maybe use even darker green. Now add mask editor and grunge rough dirt to the texture one socket. Also increase the balance of the texture. Let's play with the settings, go for 0.65 balance. Texture opacity to 1, ambient occlusion on 1, and curvature the same number. You can also add blur filter to the mask with the value of 0.5. To have the layers effect less intense, lower the opacity to something like 80. Oh, and don't forget to give the layer a name, so let's type in moss. Okay, good. With the layer selected, hit Ctrl G, name the new group moss mask. And let's define the mask some more. Add a white mask to it and then fill layer to this mask. With the fill selected, add a texture to the grayscale pulldown. This time let's choose a grunge map 0.08. So our moss just got broken up, but let's adjust it some more by changing some values here. First set balance to 0.2, contrast to 0.7 and up here Lower the scale to something like 0.17 or 0.5 or whatever you like. Just experiment with the lighting angle by holding down shift and right mouse button and dragging your mouse. This way you'll be better able to judge how the material looks by the way the light reflects on it. So in the end I made the scale to be 0.2. No, 0.5. But that's the last change, I promise. Add a new filter and choose Blur and set its intensity to 0.1. Then add one more fill layer to the mask and in grayscale menu choose the Dirt 3 texture. This will give the mask a bit of green pattern so it will resemble moss more closely. Don't forget to make the scale larger to something like 16. Also to make this fill layer blend better with the previous grunge map set it to Overlay. This way the fill does not replace it, but instead they blend into each other. Here you can see we have some trouble with the UV mapping. Our bowl has a UV seam here and the texture does not connect. So let's change the mapping of our mask. All of these fill layers have this projection pull down menu where you can choose either UV projection mode using the UVs we generated in Blender or triplanar projection that discards those UVs and creates often better map than some automatic projection from other applications. In this case, it solved our problem perfectly. Good, now the moss sticks better to the sides of the bowl just as I want it. You can toggle your masks on and off here when you right click on it and choose toggle masks. However, the moss is too regularly placed now, so let's create a new group. Name it moss mask overall, add white mask to it and new fill. In the grayscale window, type in grunge map 11. And immediately you can see that the previous mask is masked by the new one, creating more irregular pattern. Lower the balance a bit and set the contrast to about 0.6. And you can play with the crack settings here. Also set the scale to a larger number like 4. At this point I still felt that the moss is a bit too intense, so I lowered the visibility of the original moss layer to 50. And remember how I promised we will leave the scale of the grunge map alone? Well, basically, I lied. So set it back to 1. Sorry. I also decided to increase the roughness of the moss layer and adjust the color a bit more. 
Lastly, I went in again into the grunge map of the Moss Mask group and played around with the balance. I then raised the balance also for the Dirt 3 layer and lowered the scale to 12. Again, you don't have to do precisely these changes. It's completely up to you how you change the settings we set up. One of the settings I decided to change was also the height channel of my moss material. I raised it a tiny bit so that the moss layer looks more plastic, like it's actually rising above the surface of the metal. Don't go overboard with this, just something really low like 0.01. After a bit of playing with the light direction, observing the ball from different angles, I also decided to change the projection mapping of the Grunge Map 11 on the Moss Mask overall group to Triplanar. It gave the pattern a bit more believable feel. The very last thing I decided to add is a hand painted region here at the bottom of the bowl. Here our burning sticks and coal will lie, so we want to make it a bit more dirty here. For that purpose, go to this darkened layer and to manually paint a darker region, go to your masks and add a paint effect. Then in the brushes folder, choose a brush you like. We just want something irregular and grungy, so for example this artistic soft brush. Come closer to your object and you can see your dark brush over the model. However, to paint visibility, we have to switch the color to white, just like in Photoshop. So just hit X and the color will switch. And now just start painting. However, this brush is not ideal after all, so let's just switch it to this one and paint some more. There are some fragments where our brush doesn't take effect. It's due to some UV seams connecting there. However, that doesn't really matter much since this spot will be covered by our pile of coal anyway. Good, and with that, I think we created a cool metal material group. And you know what's the best thing about it all? You can now easily make a reusable smart material out of this group. The only thing you need is to remove any custom masks you created, in our case just this painted layer, then name this group something more generic that you will recognize later when you want to use this metal again, then right click on the group and choose create smart material. Yep, that's how easy it is. With that, your material appears here in the smart materials menu and whenever you want to use it on another objects, you can just drag and drop it onto them. Let's just demonstrate it here, hide both our layer groups and drop the smart material. Oh, one more thing you want to remove before creating the smart material is this custom masks we created for the bowl. But just remove it here and that's it. You can see that all the settings we created in this part of the series now got quickly applied to this whole mesh with the engravings and all. And that, my friends, is why Substance Painter is so damn cool. Even after it got acquired by Adobe. Which is great. <sighs> hmm. By the way, I've included the finished Metal Grunge material preset into the project files. So let's just find the link below in the video description. And that's it for today. Next time we will have a look at creating a bronze material that will protrude through this grungy dark metal and also we will texture the burning sticks and coal. As always, I hope you liked this tutorial and of course subscribe, like, share or comment. Any feedback is greatly appreciated. And if you're interested, you can buy my Spartan modeling course or even the Aspis course where I talk more about how I use Substance Painter. So thank you and see you next time. Martin out.